Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you um, all of my empties for 2020. This is my second update of my project pan for 2020 and this will be like the ending video, the roundup video. So yeah, if you'd like to see all the rest of the products that I finished up in 2020 and all the pans that I also hit as well, then please keep on watching. So um, inside this Mac bag, it's literally chock a block, like so full of empty products um, and I'll take you through them all. I also wanted to give a shout out to my uh, Duo Lash Glue that broke, um, which I can no longer use anymore because the nozzle broke and it all is like drying up inside. So this will probably be decluttered this year because it is no longer functional. And I also used up another Duo Lash Glue um, entirely this year and it has disappeared. That wasn't something that I used up only this year. I'd had it for a couple of years, but um, this year was the year it died the replacement broke. So yeah, rest in peace to two duo lash glues this year. And I'll get into the stuff that is in my Mac bag. I'm just gonna pull out um, what's on top and take you through it all. Um, the first one is the Model Zone Makeup Fixing Spray. This is actually a pretty good spray. I was doubtful about it at first, but eventually, um, once I started using it, I actually did end up liking this quite a fair bit. I feel like it melted my makeup into my skin quite nicely. Gave it a dewy finish without being too overly greasy or overly dewy. It was just nice. So yeah, this was the Model Zone um, Makeup Fixing Spray. I probably won't be repurchasing this just because I have other makeup fixing sprays that I'd like to try instead from other brands. But yeah, this was a nice one. The next thing I have to show you guys is the Astralis Makeup Fixing Spritz. Um, so some of these items are like really powdery because they've been in here accumulating dust for so long. But yeah, this is um, an Astralis um, makeup spray. This is their like dewy setting spray. I quite like this. Um, I feel like it set my face really nice. It gave it a satin dewy finish. And yeah, I really enjoyed this. So yeah, use this one up this year as well. Um, do I have any more finishing sprays? I think that's all the finishing sprays. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of other products now. So this one is an Ofra highlight in the shade Blissful. I was thinking I was just going to hit pan on this and that was my plan for the year. I panned it entirely. I used up the whole product. The Ofra Highlight Formula is extremely, extremely pigmented. This is like a stripe on your face. It is so blinding, this highlight, but you can blend it out um, or just use a small amount of product to make it look more natural. I really like the Ofra Formula and I'll probably be picking up Rodeo Drive in the future just because I feel like that shade will suit my skin tone better. Um, this shade Blissful was a little bit dark for my skin tone. I was able to pull it off, but um, I found it a little bit harder to work with. I had to blend it in a little bit more, play around with it a little bit more. So I'm excited to try out the shade Rodeo Drive next time but I um, really loved the Ofra formula um, and this is what it looked like on the back. That was um, 10 grams of highlight. I cannot believe I used up so much highlight this year, but I did. I have a couple more highlighters that I used up and I'll show you those as well. I used up um, Sunbeam from Benefit. I really like the Benefit's um, liquid um, highlight formula. I thought it was really nice. Um, it melts into the skin really naturally and leaves a really like dewy, natural skin that's glowing kind of finish. So really enjoyed Sunbeam. I also used up Lunch Money from Colourpop. I was expecting to hit a large amount of pan on this, but I was able to use this product up entirely, which was really nice and satisfying. I like Lunch Money. It's totally a dupe for um, the Mary Luminizer from The Balm. It's a very similar kind of shade, um, and I really liked this. I found that at the end of the product, it was kind of starting to dry out a little bit just because there was so little product left and I was using it so often, but um, I used it all up and I really enjoyed it. Um, another one that I've been using up for a while is the Maybelline Master Chrome Face Studio um, Highlighter in the shade 100 Molten Gold. Um, you've seen this on my channel many times before. It is very broken. It is all gone and I loved this. This is a very affordable highlighter and for the price you pay, this is amazing. It's very pigmented, great quality and they have a really good um, shades of this. I think that the shade that I picked up was really nice. I'm actually wearing it on my face right now. I used the last little bit of it up today. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a really flattering golden highlight. They have other shades to suit any skin tone, so look into it if you're interested. And then I also have this mini Fenty Beauty Hustler Baby Kilowatt Highlighter. It's just a little baby one like this. Um, I got this in little um, two-piece set with a lip gloss from them. I'll show you in a second. Um, but the highlighter is all gone. It was just a really nice goldy champagne -y shade. I felt like it was really suitable for my skin tone. I wish they came out with this in a full-size product because the only way that you can purchase this as a full-size product is in a split pan with um, another product. And I don't want the other product. I just want Hustler Baby. So Fenty, if you're watching, if you can hear me, I want this in full size, but yeah, otherwise I really like the Hustle Baby highlight from Fenty um, and I wish it came in a full size um, because I just don't want to buy the um, duo when I don't want the other shade in it. Um, this was the other part that came with that little two-piece set. So these came as a little um, Fenty duo like combo thing. This was the lip gloss that I used up. It's the Fenty Glow Lip Gloss um, and it's a cult favorite from Fenty. I've also repurchased this in the full size um, like packaging now because I love this so much. It's a favorite, it's a universally flattering shade and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, love these two products from Fenty so much. They're just 
incredible. Love Fenty so much. Um, next I have a blush. This is actually a blush and a highlight. This is a Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. Um, there was a mineral blush in the shade um, Flower Child and then there was um, a um, highlighter there in the shade Champagne Pop, which is the most popular shade for, I believe, both their highlighter and their um, blush. But yeah, it's all gone now. I really like the little um, UFO packaging it comes in. It's really cute. Um, I liked that it was gold. I think an aeroplane's going overhead, or it might be thunder. It's an aeroplane. Um, and then, yeah, I just really enjoyed this. I used up the highlight really quickly, and then I took a while to use up the blush, just because I think I go through highlighter faster than blush. But um, really enjoyed both of these shades. I love the shade Flower Child. I would repurchase it in the future. I have some other products that I'm going to try out and use up first, but um, I would totally recommend Flower Child. Um, I actually used up another blush this year, which is surprising for me, because I'm not really um, as much into blush previously, but this year I've really gotten into blush. This one was in the shade um, Ambra... Ambra d'Or. It says like this. It's a bourgeois blush. Um, it's one of their really famous like little pop blushes they're called. Um, and it just looked like this. Um, and it's all gone. It has a really cute little mirror inside. And yeah, I really like this blush. It took me ages to use up. I had this for years. I think this is my first blush that I ever purchased back in the day. But um, I'm glad that it's all gone because I was kind of frustrated that I've had it for so long. Um, but yeah, it is nice. I just found it a little bit difficult to get out of the... Um, pan, I don't know, just like using this product, it kind of became like harder and harder to use as I used it up. So I do like it, but I don't know if it's my favorite. Sorry, you can probably hear my mum in the background. She's um, getting excited because my dog went to bed early by herself, which is kind of funny. I'll show you some face products next. I have a couple of concealers here. So I have the Bourjois Healthy Mix Concealer. This is one of my favorites. I would totally repurchase this again. It's just a really, really gorgeous um, kind of natural looking concealer. This is really brightening. It doesn't add like a heavy coverage, but it just lightens brightens and it looks really natural and skin like on the skin so yeah really like the bourgeois healthy mix concealer and I wear the shade 51 um, light and then I used up the um, Rimmel stay matte um, concealer and this was a stick concealer it took me ages to finish up if I wanted to rip this out there's like a little bit of product down inside the tube that won't twist up anymore I tried to get it out by like ripping it out like this but I can't get what's inside that little plastic component anymore um, but I'm just gonna leave it because I feel like I've used up enough of this product um, I didn't really like this product by the end of it just because I bought this um, back when I had a lot of blemishes to cover and this is more of a blemish covering concealer but now I just use concealer mainly just underneath my eyes um, my skin's cleaned up a lot since I purchased this so I didn't really feel like this was a necessary product for my collection anymore but this was from the Rimmel Stay Matte line and it's called the Dual Action Concealer I wore the shade 10 Ivory it wasn't the worst but I felt like it was kind of thick sometimes and then I used up the Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Breathable Concealer in the shade 001 Light Ivory. This says it has lightweight medium coverage for concealing. And it just looks like this. It has like a sponge tube applicator like that. And it was just like a squeezy tube. Um, I didn't really like this. The scent felt like thick and it kind of smelt um, like sunscreen. Um, and I felt like it was really high coverage. It was nice in a high coverage sense. Like if I wanted to look really like like completely concealed. This did do that. Um, I felt like the color was really light and really bright on me, which may work better for lighter skin tones. I could pull it off, but it was just very extremely like full coverage and bright white. So yeah, it was a good concealer, but um, I don't think I'll be repurchasing this one anytime soon. Um, what else? I used to have the Bourjois Healthy Mix um, foundation. This was a mineral foundation kind of thing. I'm not sure what it was actually. It was just like a loose powder, but it was like a foundation-y powder. It was in like a warm kind of color. Um, it was slightly orange on my skin tone, but I kind of like could pull it off, like it was nice. Um, I really like the Bourjois Healthy Mix scent. I just think it smells beautiful. Um, this was really nice to wear with other powder products, and I actually did like this quite a fair bit. It gave a really natural looking finish on the skin, and when I sprayed this one down with the setting spray, it melted really nicely into the rest of the skin and gave a nice skin-like finish, so yeah. I don't think they make this anymore, but they do make another pressed powder formula instead, so I will be trying that one out soon. I have purchased it, but I haven't tried it out yet, but I do really like this foundation. Um, this is a BB cream that I've had for ages. This is actually one of the first BB creams I ever purchased, and it's the Rimmel London BB Cream 91 Skin Perfecting Super Makeup, and it just looks like this. It also has SPF 25, and I wear the shade Light. The smell of this is very nostalgic to me. Um, the Rimmel BB Cream is the first like face product I ever bought for myself and it just was part of my high school makeup kit. This was like a key part of my makeup kit in high school. Um, I would put this on in the bathroom before school and I felt like a baddie. This was like, it's so nostalgic to me. It's actually not my favorite formula. I feel like 
you can pull it off if you work it in, but um, I feel like there are easier products to use. But I do still really like this. Um, maybe I'd repurchase it one day in the future, but I have some other BB creams that I'm working through right now. But yeah, I'll have a forever place in my heart for the Rimmel 9 in 1 BB cream in the original formula. They now have a matte formula and a radiant formula. Um, I haven't used up either of those recently. I think I've already used up my matte and my radiant formula of this, but I like both of them too. But um, this one's the one that has a special place in my heart because of that nostalgia. Um, I also used up a Bourjois City Radiance um, Skin Protecting Foundation with Brightening Effect, Fresh and Even Complexion. And this was in the shade 06 Golden Sun. This was so dark on my skin tone. This was the little label, like it was that kind of colour. It was so dark on me. But what I used this for was when I was tan, I would use this with my normal foundation to darken my foundation to match my tan skin tone when I do get tan in the summer. So yeah, I feel like it had a really like nice, fresh, like fresh scent, if that makes sense. I really like bourgeois products with scents. They always have nice scents with them. Um, I really like this. I probably won't repurchase it just because I want to try other products. Um, but yeah, I do recommend this. It says it's anti-pollution screen. It has SPF 25 and has radiance boosting pigments. I did really like this and I always wore it in the summer and I felt so like fresh and summery when I mixed it in with my other foundations. It was very dark on my skin tone though, so that's why I was like always mixing it. Um, something else I wanted to show you was a brush that I ruined. I don't know how, but every time I use this, the bristles kind of like popped back into the ferrule of the brush. This was one of my favorite brushes. It was from Nude by Nature and it's a smudge brush. It's just got a flat kind of curved lip brush tip. Um, but I do have other brushes that I can use instead. I was just sad to see this one go because I don't know how to save this. It kind of just is ready to go now, which is kind of sad. Um, I'll show you some eye products. These are some liners that I used up recently. Um, my favorite liner of all time is the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Wing Liner and it just looks like this. Um, it has a brush tip. This brush tip looks really busted because obviously it's all used up, but it's my favorite liquid eyeliner of all time. It gets me a really sharp wing every time. This one is an Essence Super Fine Eyeliner Pen. Um, it has a really long and fine tip. This wasn't my favorite eyeliner of all time. I feel like it dried up like pretty quickly. Something I did discover recently is if you pull on the eyeliner, you can get another new eyeliner tip from inside. I've used up both of these eyeliner tips, so neither of them are like new or fresh anymore, but it is a cool thing that you can do with your eyeliners. Um, if you fuse them up, you can like pull them out and use them again on the other side. I've just got an eyeliner all over my hand, what a mess. But anyway, yeah, that was something I did with this. Um, once I used it up, I pulled it out, switched it over. I was able to use it for a couple more uses on the other side, but yeah, it's all used up now, um, even though it's like, I just pinched it, so that's why it's all over my hand. But yeah, it was an okay eyeliner. It was my favorite. I feel like I'd still reach for the Maybelline one over this one, but it wasn't bad at all. It was actually kind of fun to have such a long eyeliner like nib because this like tip was so long. I was able to like really like, it was like this long. I was able to really flick out my eyeliner and make a really long wing. It just like kind of encouraged me to make a larger wing, which was kind of fun. Um, something else I used up is this little MAC um, like mascara. I don't throw away my mascaras as much as I should. I feel like they last really long for me. I'm also not someone with long lashes, so maybe that goes into it, but this is the MAC False Lashes Extreme Black Mascara. It's just a little sample size, um, and the brush looks like this. I didn't love this mascara, but it wasn't awful. I just like don't have anything amazing to say about it. Um, I used it up, and I felt like the ferrule was kind of difficult to work with, just because it's a very like densely packed ferrule, so it's kind of difficult to like get your lashes in there when you're wiggling it in, so I prefer a less dense ferrule. This is like almost entirely full of bristles, like it's kind of intense, but yeah, it was okay. Two more eyeliners that I used up are these Physicians Formula Eye Boosters. Um, this one's in the shade Brown, I think it's just called Brown, Deep Brown, and then this one is in the shade Ultra Black, and they're just um, like brush tip liners. I'll open them up. They just look like this, um, and they're both really like busted and old. Um, they were good, they lasted quite a while. Um, I'd still reach for the Maybelline one just because the Maybelline one is more affordable, but these were good liners. Yeah, they lasted me for a really good time and I do enjoy them. I really like brush tip liners, they're my favorite. I just feel like they last longer and work better. Um, I have two more foundations actually to show you. These two are both from Maybelline. This one is um, the Pure Mineral BB, Pure BB Mineral Cushion BB Fresh Matte. And I'm not sure what shade I wore because I think this is all in Japanese, but it's made in Korea. I purchased this in Taiwan, it's just a refill of um, a foundation and it's just a cushion foundation. Um, I did like this, um, but it wasn't like amazing, I felt like this was nice, like normal BB cream. Um, and then this one is the Super Cushion Ultra Color Cushion um, Foundation in the shade Natural Beige and it says it has SPF 50 plus. Um, this one was like this and this had really high coverage, um, this gave a really full intense face and yeah. I quite like both of these. They aren't things that I'd repurchase. They were fine, but they weren't like, oh my goodness, this is my favorite. So yeah, they were both good, but not incredible. So I liked those. 
Um, this is the Hula Bronzer from Benefit. This took me quite a while to pan, um, but it's finally all gone. There we go. I panned a bronzer um, and I loved it. Um, this kind of felt a little bit too cool tone for me at the end, or maybe it was a little bit too dark feeling. It was also winter, and because I wasn't going out in quarantine this winter, um, it was at quarantine time and it was winter time, I just felt like I got really, really pale this winter. Um, but this probably looks fine on my skin tone in the summer, but this winter I felt like this got really dark looking on me. But I did use it up, um, I enjoy it, it's good for contouring for me. I'm not really one to like go in for a harsh contour myself, so this was like a contouring kind of bronzer for me. I did like it, I probably won't repurchase it just because um, there are other products I'd like to try instead for a while, but I would recommend this to a friend. And yeah, I do rate this, I just um, am not gonna reach for another one for a while. Um, here are some more eyeliners. I used up a lot of eyeliners. I would have used up some more, but I only realized that I could like pull out an eyeliner and switch it around and reuse the other side of the tip um, like a month ago. So I have a bunch of use out of some eyeliners that I thought I'd used up. I can like keep going on them. So that's why there aren't even more. These are two retractable eyeliners from NYX. This first one is a gray one and it is in the shade um, I think it's just called Grey. Yep, it's just 10 Grey. Um, I don't have the nib to show you, but it's just a grey retractable eyeliner. And then the next one is the NYX retractable eyeliner, and I think this one should be, yeah, 02 in the shade Black. Um, and it just looks like this. It was just another retractable eyeliner. I really like the NYX retractable liner formula. I feel like it's creamy, it's smudgeable, and it lasts a long time on the eyes. Totally rate it, and I would repurchase it again after I use up some of my other, like, retractable creamy kind of eyeliners. Um, I'll show you the rest of my eyeliners while we're here. Um, I used up two of these. These are both from Kat Von D. They're the ink. These are the ink liners and I used up the shade Trooper, which is a black, and Hemingway, which is a brown. Um, both of these were okay. I don't really love this um, formula from Kat Von D. I don't know, it does last a really long time, but I felt like this um, brush, not brush, the felt tip, I felt like was kind of harsh on my eyes. Can I pull it out and make it longer again? No, for some reason these don't come out and like have another tip on the other side. It's fine, they're minis. Um, but yeah, I just felt like even though this formula lasted a long time on the eyes, the actual applicator, like the actual felt tip, felt really rough and harsh on the eyes when I was applying it, so I didn't really love these as much. Um, I probably will not be repurchasing the Kat Von D ink liner, just because I'd rather purchase my favourite Maybelline Hyper Sharp Wing Liner instead. Um, what else is in here? I have a powder that I used up. This is the e.l.f. Translucent Mattifying Powder. You probably saw me packing on this powder all through the year. This is in the shade Translucent, and um, it is all gone now. I used this up pretty quickly, and I liked it. It wasn't life-changing, though, and I probably won't repurchase it. It was just a good um, powder, and yeah, it was affordable. Um, I have some lip products in here. Um, some of them I've used up, some of them have expired. Um, this one is a Hourglass Little Mini Lipstick, and it is in the shade canvas it's just like this it was like a nude neutral shade but as you can see it's all like cracked in there and it's all pretty much dried up now i really love this hourglass packaging it's like a little smooth look my hands are so dirty from touching all this dirty makeup but yeah um it's just like a little smooth little like loop shape i really think it's very satisfying um this is the shade um chihuahua from too faced it's from their melted liquefied longwear lipstick range and this is totally expired so i won't be finishing this this is more of a deep clutter kind of one um, it was fine, I just like liked the colour and stuff, but it was no longer um, fresh, so I didn't want to apply it to my lips anymore. Yeah, it does not smell good anymore. But the shade of this was really nice. It was like a mauve pink, and I thought it was very nice. It was like a nice natural nudie mauve colour. This one is um, Rooch from Colourpop. This was from the Karuchi collaboration she did the first time with them. And this is a really beautiful burgundy, deep, warm red colour. Um, this tube has dried out quite a fair bit, even like putting my thing through here, putting the like, what's this called, applicator through the tube, it feels a little bit thicker than it should, um, and I just feel like this formula never worked out for me, just like this particular one, I think I got a bad one. It just crumbles a bit, and I just feel like this is expired, it doesn't smell fresh anymore, so I'm going to be decluttering this one. Um, this is another powder that I used up, this is the e.l.f. High Definition Under Eye Setting Powder, it just looks like this, it's a really small little under eye powder, um, and it comes with a little like, um, shaker like a little sieve in there a little plastic sieve and you can pop the sieve off if you want like dump out a load of powder but yeah it was really cute little packaging like that um i quite liked this actually i feel like this was a really nice powder in that it was very finely milled compared to a lot of other powders i guess that's why it's called a high definition under eye powder but yeah quite liked this one um i also used up this little sample of the origins original skin matte moisturizer i didn't actually use up any of my primers this year which was kind of disappointing but it's not that bad because i don't actually have that much primers anyway 
um, but I did use up this one and I kind of used this as a primer anyway I used this before I applied my foundation or something and it just kind of mattified my skin I thought it was actually really nice but I don't really apply primer very often and I'd use this as a primer if I was going to purchase it so um, I don't really feel like I need another one of these um, I have a couple of samples in the bottom of here usually I don't throw in my samples into my like um, project pan like pan products but I'll show you what I got um, I tried out the Huda Beauty foundation in the shade Cashew. I felt like this was actually really nice. I really like the Huda Beauty foundation on my skin actually. So yeah, I did like that. I probably won't purchase it though because I have a load of other foundations that I'll be using up, especially from the drugstore first, um, that I want to try instead. Um, I used the Becca Skin Love. I didn't really like this one as much. I don't know, it just didn't really like call to me. It was okay. I didn't dislike it. It was just nice. Um, I used up the Shandikai Liquid Lumiere in the shade Happy. This was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I saw this recommended by Ingrid Nelson um, and so I tried it out and it's absolutely a beautiful formula looks really rosy dewy and natural on the skin and then just like becomes a bit more satin looking love it um i used up the orgasm illuminator so this was a liquid illuminator from nas in this famous orgasm shade um i don't feel like i need this in my life i actually have the orgasm pressed powder blush and so yeah i felt like i didn't really need it as an illuminator but it was fun to try the formula and then i also tried out the nas Laguna liquid bronzer and this was actually quite a fun product. I've used up a um, Hoola liquid bronzer in the past and that was fun to use as well um, but I have some other bronzers that I'm going to be using up first before I try out anything else but yeah this was a really fun thing to try and I do actually really like this formula. I found it easy to work with. Um, before I go I have a couple of things that I have panned a little bit like I've hit pan but they're not finished up yet so these were empties and these are like hit pan products or ones that I wanted to show you how my progress is going so in my like plan to pan for 2020 I showed the essence shape your face contouring palette um, as you can see I did achieve my goal and hit pan in every product in this palette I'll probably finish off this palette very early in the new year um, this has a very thin amount of product covering the pan there so I'll probably work through that very quickly um, and I'll be working through this blush very quickly as well and probably um, same goes for that light shade I use that light shade as like a setting powder kind of all over like this main like t-zone like center area of the face um, it pretty much is my skin tone anyway and so I feel like it just works well to set my like concealer or like around my nose with um, this blush I don't really think is very pigmented so I use up a large amount of it and I think that is why this blush has been used up so much compared to this bronzer I think the blush is nice um, it's a nice color but I don't feel like it's very pigmented and because I'm really into blush right now I'm really digging into this blush a lot to get the kind of look that I'm going for so yeah the blush also has a lot of gold reflex in it so I feel like my face is very like golden after I use that blush the bronze is quite nice too I don't have anything bad to say about the bronzer it's very nice um, it's not like amazing or anything though um, something else that I have a large amount of pan that's growing in is the Rimmel Brow This Way Little Brow Duo. Um, I've had this for ages. Um, I've used up the brow wax pretty much entirely. I have the shade 002 Medium Brown in this, by the way. Um, and this is the brow powder. I've been using this as an eyeshadow in my travel makeup bag. Just using that in the crease every time I do my makeup from that. Um, and I also use that brow powder to fill in my eyebrows. And I've been working my way through that this year. So that's a little update on how that pan is going. Hopefully I can finish it off in 2021. But we'll see because this powder has been hanging around me for a very long time. Um, and then I did like kind of achieve my goals on the other two um, ColourPop um, like super shock cheap products that I have. This one is in the shade of the Stole the Show and I have a very large amount of pan on this. This will probably be used up as well um, in the new year very very quickly. This is the amount of pan I have left on it. Um, I quite like this shade. It's a little bit um, less natural compared to Lunch Money which I did use up already. Um, it's a little bit icier on the cheek but I do really like it. And then this one is the famous Flexitarian shade and Flexitarian looks really bright and blinding. I love it. Um, it's really nice for like intense like kind of bright highlights if that makes sense. This is how much I have left. I have um, accidentally dropped this and then it split so the pan is like down the center of the palette in like a line shape. Um, and then I have product on both sides of the place where it fell. But yeah, Flexitarian will probably be used up in 2021 because um, I am really enjoying using it and I'd like to use it up before it dries out just because these products kind of do dry out towards the end of their use because they are that like cream to pad formula that's really unique. It's kind of like a jelly moussey texture. I don't know. Really like these two. This one's um, middle intensity and this one's like high intensity. This is my ranking of them all. So yeah, in terms of intensity, it goes Lunch Money, then Stole the Show, then Flexitarian. Those are the three. Um, and I'm excited to finish them up. And then the next thing I wanted to show you was this e.l.f. contouring blush and bronzing powder. It just looks like this. Mind you, it's very dirty inside. And the blush is also broken, so it like falls out sometimes. Um, but yeah, it just looks like this. 
It has a bronzer shade and a blush shade. I've hit pan in both of these shades before and I recently repressed them so that it would cover the pan again just so I could finish them up and get a little bit more use out of them just because it was getting a little bit difficult to use them when there was only product on like this side of the pan of each of them. Um, I recently re-hit pan. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see but in that blush there I just re-hit the pan again, again in it today. Um, but yeah this will probably be used up very soon in 2021 probably sometime in the beginning of the year just because I'm really powering through this and there's not actually that much product left in it. And then the last product I have to share with you that I've been working on is this grubby little brow pencil. Um, it just looks like this. It's the Rimmel like brow this way kind of brow pencil and this is how small it is. It's so cute and little. I'm not sure how long I'm going to work on this for before I finally let it go because it's barely there and I don't want to be working on like a tiny tiny little nib and be filling in my brows with that. Or maybe I will. Um, but yeah, that is the little brow pencil that I'm using up. I don't know what shade it is anymore. I think it's just called the brown, but yeah, that's the little brow pencil and how it's been going. So yeah, um, I had some other liners that I had used up, but as I mentioned before, I realized that I can pull out the nibs, flip them around and get some more use out of them. So that's what I've been doing with the rest of my liners that I used up. So there'll probably be a lot of liners that I use up in 2021. Um, but yeah, that is all of the products that I've emptied in 2020. I'm so glad you came along with me for my Project Pan ride. This is my first year doing Project Pan and I had a lot of fun doing it. I thought it was super satisfying to see how much product I was using up because I do go through product quite frequently um, and I also thought it was really interesting to see how quickly I go through the makeup because um, it kind of gives me a gauge of like how fast um, I am using up the products that I have. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up, comment anything you'd like to see from me in future down below, um, subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me and hopefully I'll see you in a future video soon. Thank you so much for watching, bye!